Hello everyone. If you're new here, my name is Lynn Nicole. If not, hi, welcome back. Today is, I'm filming a long way to video, at least for me. I literally, this just had to be done. Finally, I feel like I've been talking about this forever on my channel. So today I will be sharing my experience getting PRK. So if you don't know the difference between PRK and LASIK, both of them are laser eye surgery and they're corrective surgeries to improve your vision, hopefully to 2020, that's always the goal. And for LASIK, the eye, I'll put like little technical definitions, but basically for LASIK, in the procedure, they cut a flap on your eye, like they cut like a layer off and then like they lift up that flap and then they laser onto that exposed eye skin or eye tissue and then they put the flap back on and then you have like 20 20 vision if you are so lucky the next day and like you're good to go you can go to work after like 48 hours like you're chilling but the risk with that is if you play sports if you have small children if you have any kind of risk of something hitting your eye then there is a chance that there could be complications to like if you sustain like a normal minor iron injury if that flap tears and I just I had the ability to have like a long recovery time because I was in summer and I had just graduated so I decided to get PRK which is when the laser is lasered directly onto your eye so it just takes a longer time to recover so I did get PRK I was eligible for both but I did get PRK so my eye prescriptions Let's chat about that. What were they? I think one was negative 4.25 and the other was negative 4.5. So I know that that prescription actually goes up to like 66 or 69 or something. So they were not the worst eyes in the world, but that was my prescription. And then I ended up going to the Kramer Eye Center if you're in like the Philadelphia area and you'll kind of see my journey. I vlogged my whole recovery. So let's talk about when I actually went into the room and they did the procedure. I took my glasses off for the last time before I went into the little procedure room that I went in and there was like a whiteboard on the wall and it was blurry, like whatever was written on it. I lay back on this table and the table is kind of like tilted like this. My head's here, the rest of my body's here. And then I'm laying back and my entire face was covered except the eye that they were working on. So it was almost like if you've ever seen a surgery, then you know that in surgeries, they kind of cover the entire body basically, except the one area that they're working on. So that's kind of what they did in my procedure. Oh, guys, let me back up. We all know I'm the worst storyteller ever. Before I went into the room, like 30 minutes before, they gave me an anti-anxiety medication. I don't remember the name, so I'm sorry about that, but um, it's similar to a Xanax, I believe, I believe. So they gave me that and then they gave me some other pill. And I remember I was so nervous. They gave me this cup of water that was literally this big. And I tried to drink like, I drank the first pill and then I tried to drink the second one with the cup of water. I was like choking, it got stuck in my throat. I had to ask for more water. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> that was struggle of the day. Actually, there was so many struggles that day. But anyways, they gave me that and they started like giving me numbing drops. And then I sat in the waiting room for 30 minutes and I went in and there was like something blurry on the wall, couldn't read it on the whiteboard, got on the table, they covered everything but my first eye, and then they put more numbing drops in my eye, like they flooded my eyes once I got into the room with the numbing drops, which really helped calm me down because I was worried that my eyes were gonna feel everything. And then they put the speculum in my eye, which I was so scared about, but guys, it's actually not that bad, it's so quick. And they told me to try to keep this eye open while they worked on this eye, I think to just like help the way, like, I don't know, help me concentrate on, I don't know why they told me that, but they told me to try to do that if I could. So after they numbed my eyes, they put this little, I don't know why I thought it would make a difference if I use a different hand. It, it's kind of like a little, it almost looked like what you blow bubbles through, but like a lot smaller. And they put that on your eye and then it just like dissolves the top layer of your cornea. As the, the top layer of my cornea was being dissolved, my vision went black. It was, and I, but I knew my eye was open because I couldn't close it. So it was so, so, so freaky. Then they wiped my eye with, I don't remember what they used. 
I don't remember. But then they wipe my eye to like kind of get the surface clear. And then they told me to like stare at this little tiny like dotted light. It was just a tiny little light. And they told me to stare at it. And then the laser was actually really loud. I feel like I've never heard anyone on YouTube say that. Um, Cause I watched literally every single laser eye surgery experience that I could find before I got this done. So the laser was very, very loud for me. That was kind of like the scariest part. I did not smell my eye burning. And yeah, it was like seven seconds maybe on my one eye. After they finished with the laser on my eye, then they flooded my eye with water, which I like saw that they were gonna do that because of YouTube. And then I don't know where that that water went. I don't know if they had like a little drain on the side of my eye and that's where it all went. It did not go on my face. I really have no idea. I was just like so out of it because I was so nervous. I was clenched up like this on the table with just my eyes open, but my, my arms were crossed in like Wakanda position. My legs were crossed. Like I was so nervous. And then, and then he dropped the contact bandage on. Then he moved to the next eye. I believe that was like the whole procedure. And he did the next eye. And then when I sat up, I could read the board, guys. My vision was improved immediately. It was so amazing. I could read my name on the board and I, I could have teared up a little bit, but I think they all thought I was like so nervous. They were like ready for me to leave. No, but they were actually so nice. And they gave me a t-shirt, which is like currently my favorite t-shirt because it is so soft. Everything happened so fast. I was in there for a total of, I think, 10 to 15 minutes it was so everything happened so so fast so that was my experience on the day of and you'll kind of see my healing journey throughout and now it is six months since my surgery basically the checkups are the next day and then in three to four days to get the contact bandage off then in a week like a week after the procedure not a week after that visit then in a month, then in three months, then in six months. I believe those are like the ones, and then I think in a year, and then maybe in two years. And my eyes were like slowly healing. It really, sometimes it was a little frustrating in the beginning, but after like two to three weeks, maybe more so like closer to three, it really was not awful. And I think something that I didn't mention in the vlog portion, just because I wasn't aware of how long that would last, is my eyes definitely healed at different rates. They were not very different before I had the surgery as far as like the prescriptions, they were pretty much the same. But I believe it was my right eye healed way faster than my left. So my right eye was at 2020, I think after a month, but my right eye was at 2020 before my left eye was. And that was just, that is frustrating when your eyes are just very different, but it's not like you can wear glasses to correct the other one, to like bring it up to the same level as your better eye. So that was very difficult. And I think that was kind of the most frustrating part because it just felt like it was taking forever. Like looking back, it did not take that long for my eyes to get to 2020 and to heal and everything. And even before I was like confirmed 2020, I could see well enough to where like, if I stayed like that, I wouldn't need glasses again. Like it would have been fine, you know? And even sometimes my eye, like my right eye would be clear during the entire day. And then for like 20 minutes, my right eye would be blurry and my left eye would be the clear one. And I think it was just because maybe my right eye is more dominant. I thought my left eye was dominant, but maybe my right eye is more dominant and it's just kind of like stayed on that, like focused on how my right eye was focusing and my left eye was like, clear but it was focusing at a different its focus was different i don't know if that makes sense i did start working on august 17th and i had the surgery i started working i think like that's like almost three weeks after i had the surgery and i i recommend taking as much time off as you can if you work in front of a computer it was very kind of difficult to look at a screen for eight hours a day after like kind of avoiding screens for a while so yeah, I did start working after three weeks and I started a new job as well. So like, <laughs> it's not even like I was looking at things I was used to looking at. I was like, I had to focus, I was learning new things and like look at the screen for so long. And I had the text on my computer zoomed in when I first started. And then I still like had my phone screen, like text zoomed in just cause I did not want to strain my eyes at all. Even if I could see when the text was smaller. And then over time I made the text smaller and smaller and smaller until it was kind of like normal on my phone and on my laptop. I think I was driving after one month. So I think I was driving last week of August slash first week of September. And that was totally fine. And then for my three month checkup, 
I was told that I had 2020 vision and my vision was stable and I had officially reached 2020 and I was so happy. And I remember when I was driving home and I called my mom to tell her, I kind of like teared up because I was just like, it's just such an amazing thing. Like it is so amazing. And if you've seen my reflecting on 2020 video, you know, one of the best things that I've ever done in my life is get laser eye surgery. As far as like things that kind of happened after the surgery, like the pain went away after like you'll see in the vlog, the pain didn't last that long or like the discomfort, it wasn't really pain. At night when I was driving, I did start to have like starbursts and halos and I'll insert pictures of what those are if you've never heard of that. It wasn't awful. At first it was kind of like confusing because I was like, why do things look weird when I'm driving? at night. That has definitely gotten a lot better. I do not see any more halos at all. And now I'm not sure if I see like mini, like like tiny starbursts of like lights on cars, like very, very tiny, or if that's just like how it's always been. And like, that's just how lights look in the dark. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, I'm, I don't really remember. Like I don't, I don't really remember what my vision was like before. Exactly. So that's why like now, like it's just like a normal thing. Like you can drive at night, it's no problem. I drove into Virginia at night, like it's fine. Another one was, as far as the drops, it does take a long time to go through the drops because you have to taper yourself off of the steroid drops and that takes a month. And then as far as like the artificial tears, you can start to use them as needed after the four weeks are done. I continued to kind of use them like every day, like throughout the day. Sometimes my eyes were drier on some days than others. And then I eventually like stopped using them and I didn't even realize. So now I can go days without using drops. Like sometimes I'll go like four days, five days without using the drops. Then maybe I'll like use them two days in a row. It really just depends on how my eyes are feeling. A lot of the times I fall asleep on my couch and there's we have a fireplace in my family room. And like, if I wake up, and the fireplace has been on for like seven hours because I'm known to just like leave it on because I'm always so cold. If I wake up, my eyes might be really dry because I'm literally like right next to a fire and then I'll like go upstairs like when I'm going to bed and like put some drops in. Oh my God, there's a dog working. I'm sorry. If you can hear my brother, if you can hear the dog, like listen guys, I'm living in my family's house. Like there's nothing I can do. There's other things going on here. Like, oh my God. So funny. Anyways, so yeah, those are like, that's as far as like the dryness. I would say I do not have any dryness anymore. It's literally just, I feel like natural dryness that anyone would get. Like if you're in front of the fire, after your four week, like using the drops for four weeks, I think within a month, like you won't really feel a lot of dryness anymore. The halos and the starburst lasted longer though, because that onset longer. I think that started like in, September and then I think that went on for like a month maybe and then it slowly improved and I know that that's a normal thing. Another effect is when well, my eyes have continued to be sensitive as far as like I can't just like before the surgery if I if my eyes were itchy from allergies or something I would literally like be rubbing them and I cannot do that anymore. I don't really feel the urge to I guess but yeah I can't really just like because I know they're gonna kind of continue to be sensitive for, I know it can be like six months up to a year. I don't really feel like it affects me day to day or at all, but yeah, I can't really like rub them that much. I can a little bit, but I can't really like get in there. <laughs> and then there was kind of a point in time, it hasn't been happening as much, but there was a point in time where eyelashes would continuously fall into my eye. Like I, I would have like two or three eyelashes fall into my eye every day it seemed, and then, First of all, my eyes are like a little bit more sensitive. And like, so that was a thing. And then because I was using the drops for so long consistently, I really think it made my eyelashes thicker temporarily, which is nice, like it looks great. But when you have thicker eyelashes that you're not used to, then they're falling into your eyes, which are more sensitive. Like it just was like getting so irritating. But I think my eyes now, I mean, of course today I'm wearing mascara, but I think my eyelashes now are kind of like back to normal. But I do think temporarily they made my eyelashes a little bit thicker, which is not bad. There was pros and cons to it. By the way, I'm using my ring light for the first time. I just bought one. 
Hopefully you guys like the lighting. Hopefully I like the lighting when I'm editing. Another effect that I still am kind of dealing with now is that I do have to wear sunglasses every time I'm outside. And I think I have to do that for like one to two years, which is fine. I actually like really love sunglasses. I have like a little collection going and it's like really not like a big deal to me. And I think you should always try to protect your eyes from the sun anyway. But for me, it's kind of like, I have to do it. I cannot forget. I don't really have like, too much light sensitivity anymore. Maybe I'm like five to 10% more sensitive than I was before the procedure. But also that might be because I'm just so used to always having sunglasses on. Every time I walk my dog, I always have sunglasses on. Every time I'm driving and it's bright out, I always have my sunglasses on. I used to walk into work with my sunglasses on because I like I'm walking from my car to the like building. And I feel like people would be like, why does she have her sunglasses on? Like, you know, like, I don't know, I'm just like, I just like think about other people, like how they're like looking at me, but like always wearing sunglasses. Like maybe they think I'm bougie, but I literally like have to do it. It's like medically advised that I do it. So that's kind of like, I think the only effect that I'm like still dealing with, which is fine. I think it's kind of a good thing to force you to wear sunglasses all the time. And you can like make yourself look stylish or dress yourself down, wear like plain ones. And yeah, I think that was kind of my journey of recovering over time. And now it has been six months, like I said, and we're doing great. I have nothing but good things to say about the procedure, about my experience. I'm so happy with it. My eyes are doing very well. I still have 20-20 vision. I still can read uh, so many things that I would have never been able to read before without glasses or contacts. So I think if you're thinking about any type of laser eye surgery, as long as you pick the best type for you, PRK, LASIK, I know there's like a couple other options that are not as common. I would definitely recommend it. I had such a great experience, guys, and I just like, to this day, I just cannot believe seven months ago, I would wake up and have to put contacts in or have to like reach for my glasses and put my glasses on just to like see around my room. Like I just cannot believe that. And I, I'm just so grateful that I was able to have the procedure and I'm grateful of where I am now, where I am today with my eyesight. So yeah, everything has gone very, very well. And that's kind of the whole experience guys. That's everything. If you have any questions, please comment down below. I would love to answer your questions. I know I had a million questions when I was doing research and when I was thinking about everything. So yes, oh, I meant to grab the goggles, the famous goggles. Oh my God, they were just so awful. Guys, the things you're gonna see in the vlog, we're getting real personal. I say, I've said that in so many of my videos, but like I look rough in so many of the clips because I was just like down and out. So like my hair, God help me. Like it just was, it was very, very rough. But look, I had to do it. I had to film. I didn't want to like not, like document the time, like the experience. So yes, it looks very, very rough at times. By the way guys, I have my same outfit on in this video than I did in a vlog that I'm posting after this video because I just happened to be filming like the same day. I didn't feel like changing just to film this video and then changing back or whatever, so. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like me, please subscribe to my channel and you can hit that notification bell so you are notified every time I post a new video. And I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.